Hello and welcome back to the channel. Last week in my previous spindle warm up video, some of my subscribers reached out to me requesting that I shoot a table warm up video. So thank you, Nick, Peter, Luke, and Michael, for making that suggestion. So in today's video, we will cover exactly that. I will demonstrate how you can create your own table warm up program by using Autodesk Fusion 360 plus a splash of creativity so you can achieve the same results that I did. Now the very first thing you'll need to do is to jog your X and Y axes and ascertain how much travel you actually have. Once that is achieved, you can divide these results by two and set that number in your controller as a work offset that you don't usually use. For instance, in my controller, I picked G54P1. So the numbers that I need to enter into my controller are X0 is 197.5 millimeters, Y0 125.0 millimeters, and Z0 minus 50 millimeters. Notice all these values are in their negative. Okay, let's get started uh, doing the CAD and the CAM for this model here today. Uh, the first thing you'll need to do is to obviously to click a new design, select a new sketch. We're going to click the ground plane, uh, C for circle. We're going to snap that circle to the center point and drag out. And the diameter here will actually be uh, 245 millimeters because that's the maximum my Y travel will go. Uh, tab enter. Now to get the inside circle here, we're going to do an offset. So back up into sketch, coming down to offset tab, clicking that outer prof profile dragging it in and we're going to type in here uh, negative 2.5 okay and enter that now once I click on that there you'll be able to see that that center circle now has a diameter or a radius of 120 so a diameter of 240 uh, we're going to extrude now so E for extrude I'm going to pop up into an ISO view and I want to select that ring that donut ring shape and we're going to extrude that now 250 millimeters in the positive direction. Now to create this ellipse on the side like this is going to require us to do a um, an offset plane. So we click construction offset plane. We're going to select that plane there and we're going to drag that plane out roughly to about 130 millimeters. Okay, we're going to click on that plane now, go new sketch. And we're going to create a rectangle. So R for rectangle. And we just want this first one here, a two-point rectangle. We're going to um, roughly snap it probably just uh, to the top there, to that top edge. Drag down. So the measurement of that will be 250 millimeters wide. We're going to tab over, and that's going to be 240 high. Tab enter. What we could do now is just put two more uh, dimensions on that. And this will be from the center point to there, and that will be 130, 125. So what we can do now is put a diagonal line from this corner to that corner. E for extrude, clicking up here. Uh, this will be a cut operation, so we can drag that through there to get our plane, and that's gonna be 260 millimeters. Uh, you don't have to type the exact measurement in as long as you've cut right through the entire top of it now. And you can see this nice big elliptical shape. So now we're going to come into the cam. Now I'm, I'm not saving this model because I've already done it here previously. I'm just showing you how to do this. But if you were doing it, uh, you should click save from the very start. We're going to go into cam now. So manufacturing environment. And we're going to do a setup. So we're going to create a setup. Now, because I've set this up in the center of the table, my work coordinate system is spot on in the center, and that's what I want. However, with the stock, we're just going to no additional stock. I'm going to click OK, and that's exactly where I want my work coordinate system. We're going to come in here now to do a 2D trace. Uh, the 2D trace tool, I'm going to pick uh, my spot drill, which is a 6 millimeter spot drill, and the first geometry path that I want to select uh, I'm going to select that outside path once. I'm going to come back here to my tool tab and I'm going to make that 250 RPM. Uh, this is going to start at 2000 millimeters per minute. And I'll need to change all these going down. And this one here, 2000. Okay. And we click one more up here in our passes tab. We're going to repeat the pass and we can click OK. And if we simulate that now, 
you can see my tool tracking around. Now, the tool's going red because it assumes that it's crashing into the stock, okay? Um, if I turn the stock on, you'll see exactly what I mean. I just leave the stock turned off. Uh, we're not gonna crash anything because we're not gonna have a tool on the spindle. Now, simply, when you wanna do the next one, just go duplicate, go back into here and edit that now, and we change this one now to uh, 500 RPM. Uh, this can be 3000, and of course you do this all the way down again. On the geometry tab, I'm gonna deselect that and pick the internal one, and this will make the machine go the opposite way. So when we do this now, we can simulate that again, and you can watch this here. We'll go around one way, come up, of course it's doing a repeated pass, it'll pop up, then come down and go the opposite way. And you can vary this uh, however you want it until you have, like I've done here, I've got four of them. Or if you want to use the full travel of your x-axis, I suggest you do exactly what I taught you, uh, except instead of doing a circle on your first sketch, you'll do an ellipse and you're typing your ellipse uh, dimensions like such. Now, there's one more thing you'll need to do. When post-processing this code, I went up into here, and you pick your post-processor that you want, and I'll just save this for the desktop for this demonstration. I'm gonna call it up here, uh, capital O and 0221 for a table. 2020 was my spindle, and post it. Now, I simply modify up here. What I do here, I there, open a bracket and I just put in here, table warm up. Close bracket. In here now I edit that. Might just turn my cat, cat lock on. Do not use tool in spindle. Um, okay, so what we're going to do here, where it calls up the G54 in my controller, I'm going to make this G54P1 as my work offset. I'm going to take tool 2 out and use my empty pocket, which is tool 11. This is the one I use my probe in. I won't do this spindle warm up with the probe in it. So I need to alter the height here as well and call that height 11. We can save that now. Okay, let's go and have a look at the machine. Let's have, see it running. Well, that concludes today's video. Special thanks to the team at CAD Pro Systems for making this video possible. I really had fun making this session for you today and I trust you all enjoyed it. As always, please like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget to click that bell and I'll see you on the next video.